everybody, it's Jay. I just wanted to give you a quick warning. There are some audio issues with this episode. Ben had just moved into his new place, so for the majority of this episode, he's working on mobile. So it's not the most clean episode we've ever done, but it's definitely listenable. Also, I wanted to give you a warning. Right around the 40-minute mark, there is a little bit of a jump scare. It's nothing too bad, but I did want to warn you. We love you all. Thank you so much for your patience. I helped Ben move yesterday. <laughs> uh, Jay's been waiting for this. Jay has I been helped in spirit. I threatened Ben multiple times that this conversation was going to happen yesterday. Uh, yeah. So not, o- not only did I have to multiple times move the Darth Vader showerhead, of which he said to me at one point I might get rid of it, which really threw me into a tizzy. <laughs> <laughs> this is the first time I'm hearing of this, and that's hilarious. He said to me yesterday, hey, I might get, I, I was thinking I might get rid of it. I'm like, mother <laughs> you bought it. You commit to that <laughs> bit. You can't wuss out like that. It really is like a, uh, well, you've made your bed and now you, you got to shower in it. Got to shower in it. Classic expression that people say. But more importantly, we had one item, you know, we were moving stuff from place to place. There was one item that Ben was especially worried about that we went to the most carefulness to move from his parents' place to his new apartment. And that was a five foot superstar destroyer. Lego Superstar Destroyer. Oh my god. The ultimate collector series superstar destroyer from like two thousand seven, I wanna say. Sure. This fing thing. We were getting the last of the stuff out of this room. And the both trips that we made, I kept looking at this thing like, this is going to be the bane of my existence. And I finally <laughs> said, Ben, do you want me to carry it out to the vehicle? And he's like, no, no, I don't want anybody to be the blame if it gets dropped except me. Hey, uh, Jay goes, I could carry it. Like, it's no problem. I'm like, Jay, if that falls over, I do not want you to be the person who has <laughs> dropped it. So I would rather be the person I'm mad at about it getting dropped. Not that I'd be mad at you, but. So let me I paint a picture. That. I understand that reasoning, actually. We brought a decent-sized work van to his house and then back to the place where Ben works to switch over the vehicle. It could not fit long, like it could not fit lengthwise into the vehicle, so you had to caddy corner it so that it would it. You couldn't put it straight back, so you had to caddy corner it. We also had the dining room table in there. Well, that's what I was about to say. We had the dining room table, but the legs were taken off of it. We had a bunch of other stuff. There were two chairs in there. It's It was annoying just to watch him get it in the work van. But watching him get it into his vehicle so the work van was at work <laughs> was infuriating. Because he would walk like a toddler with it in his <laughs> arms like he was carrying the most precious, breakable child that has ever existed around the vehicle and over and then he like moves roughly everything else that's in the vehicle that is like his furniture for his house move them roughly out of the way so that he can caress his superstar destroyer into the back of the vehicle which barely fits by the way so he spends a good like five or six minutes it's like seven o'clock at night he spends like a good five or six minutes putting this thing in and finding a way to position it where it's not going to move and where nothing is really touching it. And he's just, he's like constantly like, ooh, ah, because he's afraid to break it. He puts it down. We're finally done. We're getting ready to leave. He leans down and finds that there's a piece missing. And he goes, oh, well, throws it back in and closes the hood. I'm and closes the back. I'm like, what the f*** were we doing the last f- 10 minutes? That you're just like, oh, Oh, well, mother f***er, you're driving me nuts. Oh, my God. But it was fun. <laughs> Hello, and welcome to Star Wars Every Week Forever, the podcast in which you watch one Star Wars movie every week forever. This week, a new hope. Ben, how was your watch? It was hopeful. Really? And then Porkins died, and it got real sad. Chris, how was your watch? It 
looks fine. <laughs> <laughs> the it's, painful app. It's this movie. I mean, I don't know. It's just the most nothing Star Wars movie to me now. Yeah, I can kind of get that. It's just, it's The Force Awakens, but slower. I don't... <laughs> wow. <sighs> my final... Okay, my was my watch? fine was watch. My fine oh, was okay, watch. Yeah, she... My watch was fine. I always appreciate when we get to New Hope how fucking short it is. That's the thing that I appreciate about New Hope the most. Yeah. Is how short it is. I can knock that out in about two hours compared to everything else. 90% of the movie is the Death Star. Yeah. Tatooine and the Death Star are, all, are like... And then as soon as you get past the Death Star, it's like, fuck yes, we're almost through this. Because it's like the next 20 minutes you're out. But yeah, it was fine. I don't usually complain about um, A New Hope. Can't complain too much. It takes up the got least of my time. Buddy, Trento Duaba. You got to see your buddy Trento Duaba. Ah, uh, Trento Duaba. Trento Duaba. So, I want to go back and reflect on a bit that we touched upon last rotation, but didn't have the time to fully commit to, because my brain... It has now become the third of scenes that my brain is stuck in for the rest of my life. <laughs> And that is what is going on on Yavin 4 in the command room when Luke Skywalker turns off his targeting computer. We played with this idea a little bit last rotation, but because Ben was explaining the entire sh movie to us, we didn't get to play around with it too much. But I need all of the talk on what the fuck was happening in that, in that five, three minute period in that command room when the only hope for any of them living and the rebellion living is just some fucking farmhand that just shows up and is like, I don't need my fucking car and computer. You know, there's one guy in the back who just is dumping papers into a fucking file box. He's like, well, that's it. We're going to, we're going to fire, fire this out into space so that hopefully whoever's left of the rebels is, can fucking find it. Cause we're all super dead, crazy dead. Oh, you know, we were, we were doing great hiding out here until somebody led the fucking farm boy here, and now look, we're all about to die. Thanks a lot, yeah, Princess. You know, he Excuse had me, so Princess. Much experience shooting womp rats. And we fucking put him in an X Wing, and we're just like, go for it. Go defeat the Empire. Hey, where's Gavin Darklighter? Gavin Darklighter. Oh, he's dead? Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, hmm. Gavin Darklighter sure seemed like this T 16 womp rat shooter was totally fine with flying a state-of-the-art fucking starship into the fucking depths of the goddamn trenches of a fucking world-destroying fucking space the size of a moon. And we were all just like, okay, I'm fine with that. The most prudent and important mission the Rebellion has ever taken for its own survival was yeah. put a fucking farmhand in the position to save us all. Who is, cleared this? What I love is the Rebellion didn't figure out it blows up planets until Alderaan, which was like, at most, a couple hours beforehand. Well, like, Rogue so One they're all sitting there like, it does what? <laughs> it does what? And you're sending who to blow it yeah. up? <laughs> yeah, I know this is the most important mission we've ever had, but you know what? Grab that kid that that crazy old man found in the <laughs> desert. I also like, because then we can play around with it a little bit, like, and Luke kind of responds, yeah, this old man told me that I can just, like, focus real hard and I'll get it. And, like, the, the guy that's running it just looks to his side at Leia, like, what old man is he talking about? And why are you here right now? I need you to go across the room. Yeah. I need you to not be in eyesight when I die. Because I'm going to die. Young, young man, let me get this straight. An old man told you that if you focus hard enough you can use the force okay and he mm -hmm. found you passage here with a spice runner all right no yep things are starting to make sense all right yeah. okay yep maybe we should start doing drug tests on our uh pilots maybe before they head out into space that probably would have been prudent you know what no i'm sorry farm womp rat shooter farmhand this is my fault if i had been more careful 
in who I in in making sure that everyone was totally sober before they went off and did their missions, we wouldn't be in this situation right now. So I'm just going to let you do whatever you do, and I'm going to go qu crawl into the corner in a fetal position and just, like, prepare for death. Um, who else is here? Hey, Leia, you fucked this all up. Please take this command post. I'm going to go cry. I feel as though we would be remiss if we didn't talk about what is potentially an even better moment than this, which is the moment after he makes the shot. When it actually happens. And those happens. same people talking shit, like... <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, I not... always believed in him. I always knew he had it in him. Uh, the, it's the just guy... Leia, like, crotch chopping at some dude, like, eat it! <laughs> you can't... <laughs> I told you you could do it! Eat it! There's, like, the guy that was doing most of the shit talking in the corner, just like, You're 19! You're 19! I had rightful concerns! <laughs> Oh my god, wait, that's right. Leia's only 19. Oh, well, I don't know that for a fact, but I seem to re recall that being the case. It's, yeah, her and Luke are supposed to be 18 or 19. Yeah. You know, because Leia was born so much before Luke. Yeah. By, like, seconds. But no, yeah, that has become... Part of my brain exists in the in the um, uh, dinner scene, and part of my brain now exists inside of that scene. Uh, where, where whatever's happening in that area, because it is um, a wealth of content. Oh, it's glorious. It's just people openly weeping. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jenna, I know we said we weren't compatible and that the rebellion had to come before any feelings we might have for each other, but we're going to die in 1.2 minutes, so get over here. <laughs> the fucking Death Star explodes, and they're just like, we shouldn't have done that. We shouldn't have done that. We had an agreement. No, we, we talked about this. You know, you said you would never live on Tatooine, but I need to be closer to my family, you know? It's... <laughs> my God. You have a husband. We haven't <laughs> seen him in two years, but you have a husband. I have a wife who is out in the lobby. <laughs> and somehow, <laughs> this time with you, things... I have made mistakes. We have entered the we're pitching Star Wars Lifetime movies <laughs> era of the podcast. Uh, yes. Yes, we have. Can we just stay here forever? No. Star Wars every lifetime forever? We just make we pitch Lifetime Star Wars every movies? Lifetime forever? Just we gain access to the Lifetime channel's list of hostage. I mean, stars. Yeah. And, and we make movies with them now. and They also... turn them over and then send them to Fox News. That's how it works now. Yeah. My God. Like, listen, you're going to be the rebellion <laughs> officer who falls for this guy. But, you know, also, you're hiding a secret. You work for the Empire. <laughs> they, have joint, they have joint custody with Hallmark. <laughs> I was thinking of Hallmark. Oh, yeah. Hallmark is the channel that holds yeah. their actors hostage. And they're oh, yeah. the ones that turn them over for about seven or eight years and then send them to Fox News. Well, I think Sorry, this Lifetime superhero that came out as gay... Just... <laughs> oh, my God. Sorry, Lifetime. Friend of the show, Lifetime Network. Friend of the show, Lifetime Network. Not, Not friend of the show. show. Not friend of the show. Not friend of the show. No, Lifetime Network can be a friend of the show. No, I said Fox uh, News. Not 90s Superman. Not friend of the show, Fox not News. Not friend of the show. Never was, friend of the show, Fox not, News. Not, never, enemy of the show. Enemy of the show, for Would sure. Is this the first enemy of the show that we've announced? I think. Enemy of the show, 90s Superman, Lois and Clark guy. Enemy of the show. <laughs> I don't know enough about 90s Superman to, to confirm or deny, but I'm I'm with you. Very you don't know about Lois and Clark? Very appropriate. John Mulaney bit of like, is that Dean Kane? <laughs> <laughs> ben, you've never heard of Lois and Clark? I Maybe? Oh my god. Oh god. So Lois and Clark yeah. was a network television show in the late 90s starring enemy of the show Dean Kane. 
that was a Superman show, but it was actually just about the office workspace of Lois and Clark. It's the it's first like, episode we have enemy of the show, and we've listed like ten of them already. Yeah. It's it's like someone went, you know what I really want to do? I want to make a Superman show, but with no Superman. I want I want the office, but with Superman yeah. and Lois. And then years later, ah. Smallville was made, and that guy got his wish. It was a Superman what? show with no Superman. Supergirl was more Superman than either of those shows. Ah, <laughs> uh, anyway. Oh, God. I don't want to talk about Star Wars. I'm going to make a show called go back. Tatooine, and it's just going to be Smallville, but like with Anakin Skywalker as an eight-year-old. No. And so it's, you know, no. it's what Smallville was this to is, Superman. It's, this is know, a great do, idea. We do the Star Wars mythos, but, like, Anakin never left Tatooine, but we have analogs to all the actual Anakin Skywalker and Darth Vader stuff without ever actually doing it. And at some point he starts you calling him Darth shows? Vader, and just Hayden Christensen wearing a leather jacket, because that's all fucking Smallville was. And we still, whoops, call him Darth Vader you anyway. Know, uh... You know those um, um, 80s pilots that only put up one episode and there was an entire season filmed afterwards, like another five episodes, yep. but the show is so bad that they only yep. ever showed the first episode once and it never <laughs> – it doesn't happen anymore, but, but you never see it again? That is our – this is our chance to make that, to create a show that is so bad it is legendary online that you can't find it oh, God. because it got canceled so fast. Uh, Star Wars Every Trevor presents Little Annie. Little Annie. Little Annie. God. Just. I can't. Hey, Ben. It's just young Indiana yeah. Jones, but with Anakin Skywalker. <laughs> Jay? Another show lost to the annals of time. Hey, Ben. Yeah, Jay? Name me a movie that Alec Guinness has been in that isn't Star Wars. <laughs> Well, you see, he was in uh, that one, uh, the one, that Beetlejuice. I would pay a lot of money to see Alec Guinness in Beetlejuice. I would pay a lot of money. Oh, God. Yeah, then there was, um, he was, oh, what was the one? Fuck. Never mind. It, I lost it. You, did you lose the one. one that you're going to lie about him being in, or did no, you he, actually he think of what he was going to be in? Fake I think Jay's just mad that I'm too good at this game. Oh, you're absolutely... You know, I, I am... You are kind of <laughs> killing the bit with how... You know, when you said Jimmy Schmitz was in a... Was in a um, yeah. Uh, Citizen Kane, I really realized, man, no, Ben has seen every movie ever. Fair, ben is well than, aware of, of movies. To be fair, other than Jimmy Smith's, this might be the hardest one we've given <laughs> Jimmy Schmitz was harder. Jimmy Smith, ah! I, on, I only can think, I can only ever think of one movie that I know for sure he was in. Okay, I can think of several. <laughs> sir, yeah, Sir Alec Guinness, I... I'm aware of how big of an actor he is. I can really only reliably think of one movie he was in off the top of my head. Okay, now, I, Ben, you're off the hook. What is that movie, Chris? Bridge on the River Kwai. <laughs> yeah, obviously. <laughs> yeah. Ghostbusters, you know, yeah. But... You're off the hook, Ben. Sir Alec Guinness actually voiced uh, the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man. Not many people know that. <laughs> he was, he voiced <laughs> It was one of the it was one of the first uses of motion capture in the industry. It was just Alec Guinness. Yes, Alec Guinness, Sir Alec Guinness, who spent the rest of his life shit talking Star Wars, was a big fan of being the Steve of Marshmallow Man. He used, he used to say, uh, "Highlight of my career." Ghostbusters. Hi highlight of my career, except for that little spin, you know. The highlight of my career. I, I really don't like Star Wars. I think anyone who watches Star Wars as an adult needs to go outside and touch the grass. But uh, probably the the proudest moment of my career was standing in a booth next to a mic 
voicing the state of Marshmallow. It was truly the peak of my acting career. You're all just mad because I'm right. I I begged them. I said, please, you must give me a spin. You're not! No, I am. You, you, I simply must play this character again. Couldn't you must possibly... give me a spin off of the State Punk Marshmallow Man. <laughs> On his deathbed, he's like, if I die, resur- you have my permission to use my previous roles to revoice. I have to. Even in death, I have to do it again. Oh my god. Please, please tell. In, on his deathbed, please tell me. My dying wish, you must. Get my script that I wrote, the Stay Puff Marshmallow Man versus Darth Vader. You must, you must get the script made. I promise me. Alec Guinness is gonna haunt us for the rest of our fucking Stay lives. Puff Marshmallow Man must do a spin. It's very important. Give him a sword and Give make him, him do a spin. Make him enter the room and say, "You can't win, Darth," and do a little spin. You can't win, Darth. He I just want to take the Darth best Vader. part from those shitty Star Wars movies and put it in Ghostbusters, the superior franchise. I want to do a fugue state where I want to do nothing but pretend to be Alec Guinness for 45 minutes. <laughs> yeah, no, we're done. We're done now. That's it. But that would be so good. I know. We've described how good it would be over the last few minutes. Yeah. No, Alec Guinness is every Star Wars game. Oh my god. No. 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 Please. Resounding no. Listen, Alec Guinness is perfect in the role he was in, and... I want to see Alec Guinness as Darth Maul. Greatest performance of his career. <laughs> Why? Because it would be hilarious. Alec Guinness trying to run over a child, just... <laughs> yes! I shit can't do it. I don't have the hot dog. Heart of the cards. Yes, I would pay a lot of money for to hear Sir Alec Guinness say Heart of the Cards. I'd pay a lot of money for someone to do that. Are you putting Sir Alec Guinness in the Yu-Gi-Oh! canon now? Oh, God. Oh, my God. No, Sir Alec Guinness plays Moses in the <laughs> Babe Lake canon. He plays Moses? He parted the Red Sea with the Beyblade. Hey, I don't. I feel like us as a society don't talk enough about how in Beyblade lore, Moses parted the Red Sea with the Beyblade. Yeah, I, I feel as though us in the world receiving this information for the first time in our lives. Don't really talk about this now, if you're right. <laughs> I'm sorry, Moses did what with a what now? <laughs> in in Beyblade lore, legitimate uh-huh. Beyblade lore, yeah, ba- Moses Beyblade. parted the Red Sea uh-huh. by letting it rip. <laughs> All right, well. It being a Beyblade. <laughs> <laughs> On this week's episode of not, Star Wars Every Week Forever, going... the gang talks about canon that's way more interesting than any Star Wars movie ever <laughs> made. <laughs> Jesus Christ. If you're watching the YouTube copy, you're seeing the famous image of Moses parting the Red Sea with a Beyblade on the screen right now. I didn't realize Beyblade had such deep lore. I didn't either, but I know that it's... Such deep biblical lore. Biblical lore... Lore of a big like magnitude. I feel like us as a podcast don't talk about A New Hope on the episode A New Hope of Star Wars Every Week Forever. You know what, audience? If you're listening to this, uh, when's this episode going to release in the real world? Uh, good question. There she goes. Bye. <laughs> to the archives. <laughs> um, two weeks before Christmas? So that would be... So audience, all I'm hearing right now, listen. The holidays are coming up. If you get stuck, like I often do at family gatherings with way too religious of relatives who just want to talk to you about the Bible, all you gotta tell them is be like, no, listen, I'm up on my knowledge. (laughs) You know, Moses parting the Red Sea with a Beyblade, I got it, man. (laughs) And though the Lord doth said, let it rip. I don't. I want to. I would rather talk about this forever. But we have promises to keep in regards to Star Wars. We've got a contract. The internet. And because of that, I have to talk about Obi Wan Kenobi. Gets really upset 
upset when Luke Skywalker goes to finds out that the um, stormtroopers might be attacking his home and goes to his speeder. He's like, "No, Luke, wait!" And then Luke takes off, and he's just like, "Well, I'm not that concerned with it. I'll just stay here with the droids and burn some Jawa bodies and let him ride <laughs> off into the desert on his own to possibly get murdered." He'll figure it's it like, out. It's like I it. It really struck me, like, for this guy that had shepherded Luke his entire life, that was his job. The moment that he is in perilous danger by going to see his parents die and possibly running in there while the stormtroopers were still setting it on fire, he's just like, no, Luke, I'll wait right here. Yo, you go get murdered. I don't feel like walking through the desert again today. I did it a few hours ago. I like If you die, well, just... suck. I'll apologize to Yoda, and he'll be like, what the fuck? I like to think it's just like that blind Jedi like trust of the Force, where Obi Wan's like, "Ah, oh, it's the Force. He's not going to get killed by some random stormtroopers in the desert. It's fine. He'll, he'll be fine. Deal with you know. He'll be fine. My feet yeah, are yeah. fine. Be fine. Force works in mysterious ways, and then As like Qui Gon said, the Force will guide us. Yeah, Qui Gon said the Force will guide us, this and much like Qui Gon, from... I pissed myself twenty minutes ago and need a moment to deal with that. So Luke, <laughs> you go. <laughs> you go ahead. You go ahead. I, 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 I love wearing adult life diapers, Luke, so. Spare you know, it robes. Those. Uh, this episode comes out on the 8th of December. Here's the fun part that we've all been waiting for. Oh. It is time to, a la Super Mario Brothers movie, oh, no. recast oh, no. this movie. Just like we did at the beginning of the prequels. Okay. So remember the rules. We have to pick what we think a CEO who knows nothing about Star Wars and knows nothing about the people, the roles that would be played would pick. Just to put a famous person in the role. Perfect. Same answer. Timothy Chalamet is Luke Skywalker. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, Jack Black is Obi Wan Kenobi. Counter off Robert Downey Jr. is Obi Wan Kenobi. <laughs> Jack Black as Han Solo. I want I want Jack Black Han Solo because Jack Black Han Solo would be really 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 good. Counter offer. Jack Black is Chewbacca. <laughs> <laughs> That's a win. That's a win. No, no hold yes. on. You know I'm what? Sorry. Uh, wait, hold on. Even better. Jack Black is Han Solo, and the other guy from Tenacious D, whose name I don't currently remember, as Chewbacca. Cage. Okay. Uh, counter counter offer. Jack Black, the other guy from Tenacious D, who I also can't remember the name of. Okay. Um, uh, replace the entire musical in Return of the Jedi. Um, and it's just yeah. them singing instead of whatever's happening in Return of the Jedi. We just give Tenacious D the score for yes. Return of the Jedi and let them make a whole new musical score for it. Oh my God, that would be glorious. We just we just gave them the gig of a lifetime. <laughs> To counter offer to the musical <laughs> score. Tenacious D accompanied Jack by the Black bunch of giants. Is out. Yep. <laughs> Tenacious D and they might be giants just come out in the part of Return of the Jedi where the the jizz plan plays and Jack Black is just like, all right, all right. <laughs> they're they're not even dressed Dude, like it's appropriately. Like to get everybody in tune. Yeah. It's just like, does this audience like jizz? They're not even dressed, like, appropriately. They're just in, like, band t-shirts and jeans. Yeah, like, exactly. Yeah. No, like, Jack Black is in what he wears every day of his life, which is just, yeah. like, a t-shirt with an overshirt and a pair and a pair of black jeans. That's what he wears his entire life. Yeah. So, basically, what we've transitioned this into is Tenacious D and They Might Be Giants doing the score for Return of the Jedi, but also Tenacious D no, not makes an appearance and is canon in the Star Wars universe. No, they might be giants. We've already agreed is going to rescore all the Star Wars movies. But no, this is specifically in Jabba's palace. Don't don't be ragging right. on the Max Rebo band like that. Max Rebo has been working they, club they might gigs, be giants. fucking just trying to scrape together a living, and then you got this Hollywood big shot Jack Black coming in and taking his work. <laughs> the Max Rebo band can suck it. Wow. I want ten minutes of Tenacious D and They Might Be Giants and Return of the Jedi. 
10 minutes. It's the extended cut. Somewhere this movie's on also now being directed by Peter Jackson also, for some reason. <laughs> it's just four hours long now. Somewhere on the podcast, Kevin Smith is shitting in himself, just like, man, if I knew I could get into a Star Wars movie that easy. Damn. Uh, very good, very good, very good. Who would be Leia? That's oh, what I was shit. just wondering. Um, Margot Robbie. Yep, nope, that's it. That's absolutely it. You're right. No, you. that that makes total sense. Yep, that would be <laughs> who Leia is. Margot Robbie, for sure. For absolutely sure. Charlie Day is Greedo. Oh my god. No, oh. wait. Charlie Day. Do we have a Darth Vader? Charlie Day is Darth Vader. Oh, that sounds terrible. I love it. That's the point. <laughs> kind of point, Jack Black is Darth Vader. <laughs> Charlie Day is Obi Wan. Jack Black that for the rest of his life watch. will be like, yeah, and the same. What? It's just Charlie Day fucking crazy as shit in robes walking through the desert teaching some kid to use the force. Just Charlie Day looking like he's been huffing glue in the desert all day. <laughs> like, hey, listen, your dad would have wanted you to have this. Listen, kid, just no, don't worry about it. Here's this lightsaber. Don't look at it. Don't, <laughs> don't look here in your eye. <laughs> Luke Skywalker walks out of the, the – um the bathroom in Obi-Wan's hut, and he's like, why do I have to always clean the bathrooms? Why is it always me? <laughs> I pissed myself again. Oh my god, wait, no, I don't think you guys understand. This is perfect. He then comes back as a ghost when we have Danny DeVito on Dagobah as Yoda. God. I mean, obviously, yes, Danny DeVito is Yoda. <sighs> Yeah. I mean, at this point, how do we put the rest of the It's Always Sunny cast in here now, then? Glenn Howerton is the Emperor. Who's playing Anakin? Who's playing Anakin Skywalker? It's got to be Dennis, right? I don't don't remember the the actor's name. I mean, yeah, we're going to make that Force Ghost scene always sunny. That's that's our new goal. It's always sunny. Well, Leia could just be Dean. Well, no, no, no. Hold on, hold on. Hold, 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 hold. The point is, what we're trying to build to right now is making the end of Return of the Jedi when there's three Force Ghosts standing there, all always sunny cast members. And then we just let them riff in that scene. So we have... Well, I was just going to try and cram as many sunny characters into this bit as we could. <laughs> no, 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 we need to make one perfect scene. But it can't be perfect, because we no, won't have the whole maybe sunny... Maybe Luke is someone from Always Sunny. It doesn't have to be everybody. <laughs> I know, but I feel bad for leaving anyone out. I need Mac in the there. The episode I where Ben felt there. bad for leaving some of the yeah. Always Sunny in Philadelphia cast out of Star Wars. You remember that episode? Jesus Christ. No, like, maybe we should put Luke as someone from Always Sunny. I love how this Because he's as, involved in that scene. What would a Hollywood exec, knowing nothing about Star Wars, cast the Star Wars movie <laughs> as... And now it's quickly evolved into how do we just make an It's Always Sunny Star Wars episode? Scene. Always sunny scene. I mean, it's got to be Dennis as Anakin Skywalker, right? That's what I said, Glenn Howerton. Yeah, you just have him. Uh... It's going to have yeah. to be. Can we sneak. Um, so it, it, in Gen 5 of Pokemon, there's a character named Getsis, and he has a theme song co- that, go- that has a trill in the background that goes, Getsis. Gets this, but it sounds like Dennis, Dennis. And one of my favorite videos on the internet, I'll put it up in the YouTube because it only has like 600 views and it's one of my favorite ever, is uh, is that over a Dennis dub. Um, so can we sneak that song in as the new theme of Darth Vader? Just like Dennis. What the hell Dennis. is this episode becoming? What have we done? I don't know what's <laughs> it's, it's the episode where they. Kind of talk about Star Wars, but it absolutely should not count. As no, talking just, we're about at the Star point Wars. where we're getting so esoteric. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> <laughs> this is getting too niche for me. I feel like this is the rotation where the cracks in our collective psyche are just laid bare to the audience. Like this is what these rotations have done to us. Absolutely <laughs> crippled by a lack of an overflowing bit for the rotation the gang is left to their own devices and it's not pretty what's going on in their brains now 
Yeah. We yeah, suffer. we are lost we suffer and alone. For our, we suffer for our art, you know. It's... We suffer for our art. What? <laughs> <laughs> we suffer for our art, Chris. Yeah, sometimes it's one thirty in the afternoon, and you're looking down the barrel of the rest of a day, and you're like, "This is what I've done. This is what I did at noon today." <laughs> we all had a long weekend, and it's and it's two thirty on a Monday. We're actually, what we we're actually working like office hours for once in the Star Wars every week for <laughs> office here. 2.30 on a Monday in a, in a Denny's in Wisconsin. <laughs> what is this podcast? It's not the first time we brought up the Denny's in Wisconsin. I know, that's it's why just, I said the that. The Denny's in Wisconsin just has a it's sign a on a supply closet that says Star Wars Every Week Forever Offices, and you just open it, and it's like one desk crammed in the fucking corner. I sometimes wonder why we don't have more than a few concurrent listeners. And then I remember that there's been about six episodes where we've implied that there's a Denny's in Wisconsin in which this podcast takes place in. And then I'm like, oh, yeah, that's why. Like, that should be our location on Twitter, right? Like, because you could set your location. It should be at Denny's in Wisconsin. <laughs> I'm going to do it. <laughs> I'm going to take care of it. Oh if, if, the, if the account gets banned because I do this because – Twitter is really weird about your location. Oh, jokes in their location I'm all the changing time. It. Who does uh, who's Twitter to prove that we don't actually produce this show from the office of a Denny's in Wisconsin? They don't <laughs> know us. Like, we're in Wisconsin. Doesn't matter that none of our hosts have ever stepped foot in the state of Wisconsin. <laughs> Allegedly. What's Wisconsin. I know Alleged. one Denny's in Wisconsin. Allegedly? Are we putting it allegedly? We've on allegedly there? never been to Wisconsin. You can't prove it, Twitter. You can't prove we haven't been to Wisconsin. Is that on the podcast? <laughs> what is happening today? I'm just, spiritually, I'm I'm in the war room for the rebellion. As all our friends are there. To try and save our lives. All our friends are there. Trento Duala, well, changed... Rick McCallum. Okay. Star <laughs> Wars Episode Four: A New Hope. Yep, that sure is a movie. It is a movie. It is a movie that Alec Guinness does appear in, Ben. I don't remember him being in there. I am no, Alec too tired for that, that joke. Alec Guinness was not in that one. What was he in then, Ben? Well, you see, uh... He was in... Alec Guinness, uh, famous uh, for being um, the State Puff Marshmallow. What was he in if not <laughs> no, Star was, Wars, he, Ben? No, no, wait. He was also in... Uh... Why are That's you working so I'm hard to come up with a no, no, bullshit cause, answer? No, because no, I'm thinking of a specific movie, but my brain keeps saying the good, the bad, and the ugly, but it's not the good, the bad, and the ugly, and it's not even a western. It's kind of a western. Uh, No Country for Old Men. The movie that came out, I believe, at <laughs> least a decade after Sir Alec Guinness died. Listen. listen. <laughs> he faked his death. Sir Alec Guinness faked his death good. so he could be in No Country for Old Men. Probably go haunt Mark Hamill. It's good. It's a funny bit, you know. Ooh, my name is Mark, Mark Sir Alec. I'm surprised Mark Hamill hasn't tried to actually like joke about that. Mark Hamill shows up on an episode of Hollywood Medium, and he's just like, "Yeah, Sir Alec Guinness won't leave me alone." He shows up in the corner of my room sometimes, just like Luke. <laughs> Which I don't understand because Sir Alec Guinness hated Star Wars, but maybe it's just like the Force goes. And the ghost became one thing, and he's just like, Luke, Actually, can I also have a piece of that sub? You make a Luke. good point. Sir Alec Guinness probably haunts George Lucas. You're probably right. It's like, motherfucker, I, I did Perch Over River Kwai, and motherfucker, everybody only remembers me from Star Wars. I hate you, George. I hate you. Ben appears to be stuck in a frightening liminal space. 
where his <laughs> Skype has frozen, and he's just I think we lost ben. suspended in time in a chair. I think we lost Ben. Oh, Ben. Oh, Ben. <laughs> the ghost of Sir Alec Guy. He's gone. Yep, oh. he's gone. Sir Alec, no, have mercy. <laughs> Sir Alec, don't kill Ben. I swear, I'm gonna stop the podcast before Sir Alec Guinness kills us all. This has been Star Wars for me forever. This has been Star Wars for me forever. No, Sir Alec Guinness, no. Hello there. I'd love you to do something for me, I said. Or anything, anything, the boy said rapturously. You won't like what I'm going to ask you to do. Anything, sir, anything. Well, do you think you could promise never to see Star Wars again? He burst into tears. So, uh, it's a week later. Um, we were indeed visited and kicked off of that call by the ghost of Sir Alec Guinness. Um, so we were all really, really afraid for a little bit, but it turns out Sir Alec Guinness was just serving us papers. Uh, in, even in death, it seems like Sir Alec Guinness, much like his investment in Star Wars that still, uh, that still goes to his family, uh, is invested in making sure that his brand as Obi-Wan Kenobi is protected. So we were served papers. I have been required to say, um... The words of Star Wars Every Week Forever and Impressions of Star Wars Week Forever of Sir Alec Guinness are in no way correct, and our visions of Obi-Wan Kenobi are not those of the original creator. And I've also been asked, and this was a nice out, so thank you, Ghost of Sir Alec Guinness, um, to do a uh, Show Me That AO3. Hi, everybody, this is Show Me That AO3, uh, court mandated by the ghost of Sir Alec Guinness. I was to say, um, I didn't expect the ghost of Sir Alec Guinness to be quite so litigious, but, I mean, here we, <laughs> was, here we are. Here we are. Sure. Listen, I don't want to go to hell court. Uh, so Show Me That AO3 is a segment that we do occasionally on the podcast brought to us by the wonderful people at, at SWAO3 Tags on Twitter. Um, I guess in the afterlife you don't have much uh, much to do except read Archive of Our Own, so Sir Alec Guinness. Did you just vaguely imply that poor Sir Alec Guinness is in hell? <laughs> no, I just said afterlife. You said you don't want to go to hell court. <laughs> well, no, like litigation is handled in hell oh, guess, regardless of I what's guess, going yeah, on. I yeah. guess that makes sense. I yeah. guess if there is an afterlife, if there's going to be any kind of litigation going on, I would if imagine it, it would be in be, hell. Because yeah, I've been to court. If you've ever been to court. Anywhere, it was going to yeah. have to be hell. Yeah. See, a litigation has to be handled in hell because if the determination is that your eternal soul is damned, you have to go right down there anyway. But if, if you get cleared, you know, you, you can just go to heaven whenever. Anyway. Now you see heaven? That's where they have all the pod races, though. This, so uh, show me that AO3 is a segment brought on by um, at SWAO3 tags on Twitter. Uh, they are a wonderful service where they take the tags on the world's most popular fan fiction website archive of our own, take them out of context, and then go ahead and post them for the world to see out of context on Twitter. Are you ready to play? Always. I'm always ready to play. Okay. So these are all Obi-Wan Kenobi themed. Oh, God. Incredible. So. Number one. Ben Kenobi, that fucking robe must reek it's been 20 years shower (laughs) number two ben just wants to kiss pretty boys now i do you do yes this might be about ben our ben and it might also be about ben solo but i choose to believe it's about obi-wan kenobi number three Obi-Wan tries to avoid dealing with his issues at all costs, and in the process, accidentally saves the galaxy. <laughs> that number, one has to be bait. Number four. I mean, it's just very accurate. Number four. Obi-Wan is professionally sad. <laughs> Same. Me too. Stop. 
<laughs> Number five, Anakin and Shmi are here to fuck your fake democracy up. Ben's just along for the ride. So that's all five of ours. We're going to go through them one more time. Mm -hmm. Number one, Ben Kenobi, that fucking robe must reek. It's been 20 years, shower. Number two, Ben just wants to kiss pretty boys. Number three, Obi-Wan tries to avoid dealing with his issues at all costs and in the process accidentally saves the galaxy. Number four, Obi-Wan is professionally sad. Number five, Anakin and Shmi are here to fuck your fake democracy up. Ben's just along for the ride. I think it's One number these, three. You think it's number three? But I think any of the other ones could have also been written by you very easily. These are these are all very much. Jay I'm Jay I'm Jay. really between one and three, but I'm gonna say three. Okay. I'm gonna say ben. three is probably bait, so I'm going with four. Okay. So Chris is saying three. Obi-Wan tries to avoid dealing with his issues at all costs, and in the process accidentally saves the galaxy. Ben is saying four, Obi-Wan is professionally sad. As it turns out, you're both wrong. It's number one, Ben Kenobi, that Damn fucking it. robe must reek. It's been Damn 20 it. years, shower. Because if you look at the robe, it has similar burn marks yeah. to the robe that he wore in Revenge of the Sith, and I they talk about it in the special features, and that thing must fucking reach! I really, in that, like, sec after I said, for the, you know, I think it's three, and I, I, I'm, I'm sitting here thinking, I'm like, no, nope, I should change it to one. It's definitely fucking one. God damn it. <laughs> You're very good at this game, because you are very good at finding ones that sound like you would have wrote them. Exactly. It's really you hard. Know, it's you really know hard. that we know you way too fucking well. Well, what it comes down to is, especially in a case like this, I just Google search our Twitter's search history. I'll just put in a keyword in this case, and I'm just scrolling down. I'm like, that one's not funny. That one's not funny. Here's a funny one. So what you just said to me was, I'm funny, which I appreciate tremendously. I don't think it's true, but I appreciate it. Um, I think you're very but, funny. You're my favorite improv partner, Jay. What are you talking about? <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. You Her both and are we just Her Her And we just Her taught you what yes and was like six months ago. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's yeah. true, actually. It's true, actually. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Um, I'm getting, I'm actually getting a fax here. Um, apparently, <laughs> I am... also agrees. <laughs> Yeah, no, Sir Alec it's Guinness is my um, Sir Alec Guinness is actually really uncomfortable and unhappy with the direction that this bit went, so we will be getting litigation. I don't blame, so I don't blame him. Allegedly. And it just says in big bold letters at the bottom, I am not sad. So this has been Star Wars every week forever. We are sorry, Sir Alec Guinness. Good night. Hey, if you enjoyed us, thought we were funny, like our content, or just really love our suffering and want to hear more of it, we're available all over the place and release episodes every Wednesday around 12 Eastern Standard Time. You can find us on Spotify, Amazon Music, TuneIn, Player FM, iHeartRadio, Google Podcasts, and in a unique format over on YouTube that our fans seem to dig. You can join in on the conversation over on Twitter as well, at SWEWF. We're quite active and love to hear from our fans. Sincerely, though, we appreciate you taking the time out of your day to spend with us on this car crash of a ride. <laughs>